Uh, hello everybody, this is Tim once again with uh, close to my final Halloween review. Uh, this is a review for the fucking um, Rob Zombie remake or reboot. I have the unrated director's cut on DVD. Uh, two disc special edition. Okay, let's jump right down in this here. I don't like remakes. Well, remakes I don't necessarily mind, but when they since every film in the horror genre has been remade, uh, it's become annoying and annoying as shit, and I can't fucking stand it because they've just done so many of them that it's just become like a joke now. And the fact that they keep remaking horror films that are already classics and don't need to be remade at all or updated because they're timeless, so that it just makes films these films feel like they're useless, like they have no reason to exist, and they don't. This film, I'll be honest, is not so much of a bad movie. It's not a bad movie. It's better than Halloween 5, the theatrical version of 6. I'd even say it's better than H2O, and it's better, than, definitely better than Resurrection. It's also better than Halloween 3. It's not better than Halloween 1, 2, or 4, or the producer's cut of 6. But it's better than the ones I mentioned. Uh, but it still has no reason to exist. Uh, the film stars uh, Sherry Moon Zombie, uh, Tyler Maine as Michael Myers, Michael McNeil as uh, Sam Loomis, um, Scott Taylor uh, Compton as Laurie Schrode, uh, Brad Dourif as Sheriff Brackett, and Daniel Harris as uh, Annie Brackett. But anyway, jump straight into the film here. Uh, I don't hate this film. As for Rob Zombie's career, uh, House of a Thousand Corpses I like, Devil's Rejects I really like. Uh, his remake of Halloween, I, this one I think is just, I think this is a decent movie. It's not a, I wouldn't say... Well, I would, I'd say this is a good movie. It's a good movie. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't um, if it wasn't uh, a Halloween movie, if it wasn't Michael Myers, then if it was just like some random serial killer that he came up with, I would really enjoy this film a lot more. But um, as it stands, as a Halloween movie, i got to compare it to the original. So it doesn't wind up being an amazing film like the original, a true classic. It just winds up being just a good movie. So it, it's definitely a, a lot of steps down from the original. It's just a good movie, not a great movie. I would give it two and a half stars out of a possible four. Um, there's still no reason for the film to exist, regardless. Uh, to jump into the film, though, you got a well. The first half of the movie is better than the entire film, to be honest. When Michael Myers is a little kid, played by let me see what the actor's name is here. Well, it doesn't even list him on the back, but I think his name is. Dag, I think is how you say his name, Dag. I remember seeing it in the credits in the film, but uh, he doesn't have his name listed on the back. But um, he does good playing the young Michael Myers. But the thing I don't like about it is that Michael Myers I always see as like a little sweet kid who you never expect to go crazy. But this kid has like heavy metal t-shirts and everything, which I'm not saying signify that he's you know a nutcase or anything because I like heavy metal music. I'm just trying to say that um, the way that not them t-shirts and stuff but the kid's face the way he looks he looks like he might get angry and stuff he doesn't look like a little sweet little kid you'd never expect to hurt somebody um so that right there for me weakens it weakens the character for me i don't enjoy that and also because they give michael myers the character this film is told from michael myers point of view which i think is really cool honestly i really do enjoy that and i gotta hand it to rob zombie for actually pulling that off pretty decently of telling a story from michael myers point of view uh and making him an entertaining character <laughs> But um, as for the character himself, though, he gets a generic serial killer background, a horrible home life, um, he kills animals when he's young. I mean, that's interesting stuff, and like I said, it would be better for just another random serial killer. But for Michael Myers, a figure like, you know, he's the shape, you know, he has uh, uh, heart, uh, no emotion at all except little glimpses of humanity that creep out every now and then. And it's pretty much a blank slate, um, but, uh, or pure evil, I mean. But when you give him like a generic serial killer background and stuff like that, it just turns him into a real person and takes away from the mystique of him instead of just him being like a little boy that just goes crazy, just go to just to go crazy like he just turns evil just to turn evil instead of just being you know made evil. But uh, anyway, or made to become evil because of his horrible life at home. <laughs> but uh, Sherry Moon Zombie in the film plays his mom. She does okay. Her acting is good here. I never. I, I never thought of uh, Sherry Moon Zombie as a great actress, and I don't think she is. But in this film, I think she carries herself rather well, and you sympathize with her. And she does she does good with what she has, so she's fine here. Um, the little boy that plays Michael Myers, like I said, he's he's good. For the first half of the movie, he does great. His story and him going crazy is more interesting than the entire rest of the film, which becomes like almost a carbon, just like 
just Michael Myers on a typical rampage and copying the scenes from the original just to throw them in there because it seems like Rob Zombie is making his own movie. But then uh, sometime towards like through the movie, they said, Rob, uh, while he's filming it, said, Rob, you got to put some original Halloween shit here. We need it. We need it back and get to the classic level. And he's probably like, oh, fuck. And then they, they forced him to put shit in. It's what it feels like. Forced him to put shit in from the original film, even though he was doing his own thing. But anyway. Um, to jump into the film, though, uh, you got a young Michael Myers played by Dag Finch, or I think was I think his last name's Finch, or something like that. I know I think I'm pretty sure his first name is Dag though, so I'll just go I'll just call him Dag. Uh, but anyway, you got him in the film. Uh, he's a he kills animals and shit, typical serial killer shit, which I'm not really interested in, which would work for another character, but not Michael Myers, or not an adaptation of Michael Myers. Regardless of whether this is a new adaptation, and it is, is this is not the same Michael Myers from the other original franchise. This is a new version. Uh, this is the Rob Zombie version, which I do respect, but at the same time, this version is not as interesting or as cool, and it's more generic. Uh, but, uh, so he kills his pet rat and shit, and you got William Forsyth from Devil's Rejects, who I like, I like him in Devil's Rejects here, he just plays like an obnoxious asshole, so, he's a typical asshole, Why? this is like a white trash family, this is like white trash version of Michael Myers, which I find funny, <laughs> seeing Michael Myers in a white trash, uh, family, <laughs> but still, at the same time, it's like Rob Zombie's thing, where he wants to make white trash people in every movie, and make every movie as grungy, and as hopeless, and, uh, everybody in the movie an asshole as much as possible. Even the characters in here that we're supposed to like and care about whether or not they die, you don't because they're so obnoxious that you just don't give a fuck. That's a problem. I watched this movie with the commentary on. Rob Zombie constantly talks about how he wanted to make the teenage characters like real people. I'm sorry, Rob. You made them, made them obnoxious. I, uh, I'm not too old. I remember, uh, I mean, not too old enough where I don't remember high school. Uh, my teenage friends, they did not act like this. They cussed and stuff all the time a lot, but, and they acted a little goofy, but they didn't go over the top obnoxious like this. This is just, this is, uh, every once in a while, it's okay, but when he overdoes it and the characters are just cussing nonstop or being overly obnoxious and rude, it just comes off as annoying and you just don't give a fuck that they die. I mean, I didn't anyway, <laughs> but, um, for the story here, He's got a horrible home life. His sister Judith is a total asshole. Everybody treats Michael Myers like shit other than his mom. So you can, so you don't really give a fuck that he kills his mom. I mean, who gives a shit? <laughs> but uh, that's the problem with the movie. You just don't give a shit about anybody. Michael Myers is the most sympathetic and likable character in the film. <laughs> and he's insane. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> they don't want to take him trick-or-treating. His mom is a stripper. Typical white trash stuff. Uh, um, Shane Moon Zombie does fine. Um, William Forsythe's a total dick face. He, uh, there's this kid at school who picks on him and shit, and you get some funny stuff where the principal comes in there, and he says, uh, he says, fuck you to the principal, and the principal's like, fuck me, <laughs> uh, come this way, <laughs> he grabs him and starts fucking hauling him off, which I thought was funny, I recognize the actor who plays the principal, but I can't place his name, but, uh, I thought that was funny, um, they find a dead cat in his fucking school bag, which I, I'm like, okay, <laughs> but, um, I, I kill her, killed animal stuff, or whatever, just like, the killings of the animals and stuff is overdone. I'm like, so generic serial killer stuff. I mean, like I've said before in other videos, if you need to, if it uh, serves the purpose of the story and you need to kill an animal in a film, I'm fine with it. But uh, for overdoing it like this for a character like Michael Myers and making him into a generic serial killer, it just annoys me. But um, uh, back to back to the plot here. Um, so uh, you get Dr. Loomis's entrance, Superfly, uh, <laughs> fucking uh, Malcolm McDowell, who's well, they do their own spin on Dr. Loomis in this one. He is different, which I appreciate. I'm glad they didn't try to copy Donald Pleasance. Although, when he tries to recite lines, like little homages, and tries to do lines over again from the original Halloween with Donald Pleasance, uh, his lines, and the way he delivered them, it just comes off as a pale uh, intimidation. Um, or a pale reenactment, I mean. It just, it's not as good as like a little stage play and somebody's playing Loomis instead of him being Loomis. Uh, but uh, I prefer it when he's just as his own version of Loomis. Like you get the idea in this movie that he doesn't really even care about like the crimes and stuff Michael Myers has committed, or even cares about keeping him locked up. That he more or less cares about. Or you get the idea that he does care, but that he more or less just wants to make money off of it and sell books and shit. Kind of get that idea, but they don't play with it enough. They play him up as more of the traditional hero, but you kind of get the idea that he enjoys making money off Michael Myers. But they don't play it up enough for me. They overplay it in the sequel and make him into an asshole. But uh, I'll get into that when that one comes after this after this video. 
But, uh, so, uh, he becomes suspicious of Michael Myers. He's telling Cherry Moon that Michael might need treatment or whatever. Michael goes, and the bully that mistreated him at school, he fucking catches him out in the woods. Michael's got a clown mask on him. But it's the kid from fucking Spy Kids, the boy from there, I believe. He beats the shit out of him with a with a fucking stick, which is pretty entertaining death scene here. You kind of feel sorry for the kid, even though he was a total douchebag. Uh, and the camera, like, zooms around the forest, like, like a big overview shot. And it's cool. It looks really cool. And, uh... So he's beat to death with a stick, and he's got bloody nose and everything, blood coming out of his face, and the way he plays it, it's like really sympathetic, so you feel sorry for him, even though he's a total, he's a total fuckhead, an uh, asshole. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I almost didn't give a shit, but him being a kid, I kind of cared a little bit more than I do for the other adult characters or older characters. So Michael goes home, uh, he tapes William Forsythe up to a chair, which I'm like, William Forsythe's drunk, and I'm thinking, even though he's drunk, I mean, you you would still feel somebody taping you like a whole fuckload of duct tape to a chair. I don't care how drunk you are, but whatever. Um, and then he slits William Forsythe's throat and he bleeds out. And that's a pretty decent scene. The makeup effects are fine. So William Forsythe's dead. Um, then he kills his sister Judith's boyfriend by beating him in the head with a aluminum baseball bat. Decent scene. While, like I've said, this whole character study of Michael Myers and everything, even though it's a generic serial killer background, once they kind of get out of that with him killing the animals and stupid shit like that, um, it kind of becomes more interesting with the other stuff, uh, with him massacring people and all that. So he kills him with a aluminum baseball bat, and then he heads upstairs, and then the, the boyfriend had, like, the fucking Michael Myers mask. He's wanting to fuck Judith with it on, and I guess he's trying to get kinky or something with it. <laughs> but, um, so, uh, he comes upstairs, gets the Michael Myers mask, puts it on, and it's kind of goofy seeing this little kid with the Michael Myers mask on. It looks really silly. So he stabs Judith in the gut. She starts going down the hallway, and Judith is obnoxious in this movie. She's like, you got a scene where she, like, jacks off, like, uh, or pretends like she's jacking off something, and I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, she's obnoxious, and she doesn't want to take him trick-or-treating or anything. Instead, she wants to fuck her boyfriend, I guess, or get laid. So, you don't really give a shit what happens to her. So he slices her in the back a bunch of times while he's wearing the Michael Myers mask, and he looks like a little, a little ridiculous midget. The Michael Myers mask on, uh, so it just comes off as silly. But uh, anyway, so he kills her. She's dead. Uh, the mom comes home, finds everything. It's obviously a fucked up scene. They got Michael Myers and Little Mikey in a police car. I'll call him Little Mike. They got Little Mike in a police car. Uh, you get like a, a freeze frame shot where the camera pans around. Everybody just froze. It's pretty cool. And they go to Michael Myers, a Little Mikey. And turns his head like towards the camera like that, and it's pretty, it's pretty neat. Rob Zombie, he does have directing talent. His films have gotten worse though. It's like he's out of ideas, or, or he's just doing his own thing so much that he just doesn't even give a shit whether he makes a good movie or not. He's just like Rob ex Explosion uh, on film, Rob Explosion, where he just goes all out with his style and uh, doesn't hold back, and nobody uh, just, like approves his script. He just does whatever he wants. But uh, anyway, so uh. You got, uh, then you get the most interesting part of the film for me. We got Michael Myers in the sanitarium, and you got Michael McDowell as Dr. Loomis, and he's there talking to him, and you get to kind of see like how Michael Myers is and in a little bit inside his mind. This is the most interesting part of the movie for me. This is the best part of the film. With Michael McDowell and his uh, Michael Myers relationship growing, which makes me wish I could have seen a prequel to the original series with Donald Pleasance and Michael Myers, but and little Mikey. <laughs> but uh, this is the best part of the film for me. Uh, it's the most interesting you kind of get the idea that Michael wears these masks so he can, like, kind of hide his stuff from the world and, just, and become someone else when he kills people. Kind of like how he, he wears, he puts a mask on any time he murders somebody. So you kind of get the idea that he's, like, a, um, hiding his stuff from the world with these masks. And he doesn't want to face what he's done and stuff. Kind of like he's suppressing himself. Which is interesting for the new version of Michael Myers. But, uh, eventually, uh, do you get this scene in the movie I thought was kind of stupid. We got the nurse in there and she's... Michael Myers' mom gives him a Mikey. I'll just call him Mikey. It makes it simpler. I'm still young Mike or Mikey or Michael or whatever. Let's call him Mikey. Um, so you got a scene where Mikey is sitting there at the table and he's got a picture of himself holding his um his little other uh, little sister, baby sister. For some reason, he has a fetish with and <laughs> doesn't want anything to happen to her. Is like obsessed with. I don't know why. I guess because she's the one didn't mistreat him or anything or something. I'm not for sure. Uh, but uh. She has a picture of her, and the nurse comes in there and picks it up and is like, cute baby, couldn't possibly be, be related to you. And I'm like, okay, seriously, would somebody actually say that to somebody in a fucking asylum? But whatever. <laughs> so he flies off, stabs her with a fork in the neck, I think, or maybe a knife, and kills her, and she bleeds out. Uh, yeah, and then you get like this really, uh, there's no sound in this scene. Like I said, there's some good directing stuff in here. Rob Zombie has some decent directing stuff in here, style-wise. And um, you, there's no sound or anything playing. You just hear like the fucking... Like alarm going off there, like, like over and over, real loud. And uh, fucking Sam Loomis runs in there. 
Michael McDowell does. Sherry Moon comes in there and she's like screaming her head off, holding her face like, ah! <laughs> which is kind of, um, <laughs> which is decently entertaining and acted and acted well, acted well by Sherry. I'll give her credit for that, despite the fact I don't think she's an amazing actor. But um, and so after that, it's pretty much she sees that her that Michael is, Mikey is fucked. That there's nothing she can do. So she decides to boil her brains out, <laughs> which I'm thinking. I can kind of understand her uh, giving up hope and maybe committing suicide, but at the same time, she's got a little baby, so I don't really see her, you know, just because one child is fucked, that she would just give up on the other like that and just leave it alone and just kill herself, but at the same time, Sherry Moon plays the scene well, so it's okay. All right, then you skip to the future here. You got uh, Big Michael, so I'm just going to call him Michael Myers now. So you got Michael Myers now. Uh, he's a big motherfucker. He's huge, played by Tyler Maine, who... Who, uh, this version of Michael Myers does have emotion, even though he's, like, got the mask on, and Michael Myers is supposed to be, like, a person with, like, wears the mask, so he have no emotion, because it's pale white and has, like, nothing to it. But, uh, in this film, even though he has the mask on, he still shows a lot of emotion, like, the way he walks, the way he looks and stuff around all the time. It focuses more on him as a character, and more on him as, like, uh, he, like, how he sees things a little bit, or how he, uh, you kind of get the idea of, like, uh, that he has like a kind of like a little bit of a child mentality, even though he's an adult. Like when he kills the guy, he's got a pumpkin on his head and he hits it and stuff and just like knocks the guy's body back and forth. Which I like that scene, but it's definitely a different version of Michael Myers. But um so you got big Michael Myers now, you got Danny uh Trejo in here. Which uh I like him, he's alright. He does fine as like the sympathetic worker there who's friends with Michael Myers. And you got this guy who works with him who's like a total douchebag who just like you hate him. And then you get uh, Sam Loomis, who's now profited off Michael Myers and made a lot of money off like a book he wrote about him and shit. Um, so uh, Sam Loomis decides to leave because there's nothing else he can do for Michael, so he just gets the fuck out of Dodge. And then Michael, it's kind of like you get the idea that he's uh, he's become attached to Loomis now that Loomis is gone. He has nobody since his mom and everybody's dead. Uh, so it's like now you get the idea that now he's deciding to break out because he has nobody. So. Uh, this movie makes you sympathize for Michael Myers, which I'm more interested in Michael, the original character of pure evil than I am just the character of like a, like somebody I'm supposed to care for. Like you can't, uh, it's hard to balance the idea of him like murdering people brutally and then still having him as a sympathetic character. I mean it is, it's difficult regardless of how bad his upbringing was. Somebody cussing at you and stuff like that, I don't really see that as a, uh, even though he was like cussed at and everything and his sister was a douchebag and when like making jack off references and stuff I'm like I still don't see that as making him go this completely crazy but whatever um <laughs> so uh later on after Loomis is gone he decides to snap out of there and in the theatrical cut you got like a prison break where they're transporting him these cops are and you get Bill Mosley in a little cameo which was fun and uh he fucking just goes ape shit and kills all the cops, which I thought was entertaining and I enjoyed. But in the underrated director's cut, you get a horrible scene that has no reason to be there. And it's like Rob Zombie forced it in just to, just to make uh, the characters even more sadistic and Michael Myers more rootable for it. It just seems so out of place. There's a fucking rape scene in here where the asshole character who was working with Danny Trejo comes back there. And he's got his cousin there, I believe, played by Courtney Gaines from Children of the Corn. And they're fucking going to rape this mental patient. And they decide to do it in Michael Myers' room. This fucking seven foot serial killer's room, and I'm like, okay. And they take her in there, and they start raping her in there, and they start messing with all his stuff and everything, and messing with him. And I'm like, this is so over the top. This is just like such a cartoonish version of like degenerates of humanity. That's not even funny. But uh, so he fucking flies off and uh, knocks Courtney Gaines down, and takes a uh, asshole outside, and just hits his head against the wall. And I'm like, this guy's like such a cocksucker and a rapist piece of shit that he goes out way too easy. <laughs> or gets it way too easy just with a head hit against the wall. He should have died more brutally, but whatever. <laughs> so uh, after that, Danny Trejo comes back. Everybody, in the, everybody works there is pretty much dead. Uh, Danny Trejo tries to get Michael Myers to go back into his uh, his room so he can uh, lock him back up in there. But he kills Danny Trejo. But at the same time, I'm th I'm, I understand that we're supposed to think that his humanity is completely gone now. But at the same time, I'm thinking if his humanity is completely gone, then why is he still attached to his sister? Because it's clear in the movie he doesn't want to kill his sister. It's more like he's just wanting, wanting his sister to remember who he was so he can have some kind of family relationship. So I'm thinking if, he, if his humanity isn't gone with her and her a baby and he spent most of his life with this, with this guy, really, then uh, more with him than he had, did with her, then wouldn't he have more attachment to him? But whatever. So he kills Danny Trejo by drowning him and then dumping a TV on his head. It is a decent scene. It doesn't really make much sense to me, though, still. So he escapes. 
uh, Loomis decides to, Loomis finds out that Michael Myers escaped. He decides to fucking go war in Hattonfield. The, the sheriff there, Sheriff Brackett, played by Brad Dourif, who does find, Brad Dourif does find. Uh, Brackett, to be honest, is more of a heroic character. Uh, or a little bit more of a uh, respectable character than Loomis, because even though Loomis does more in the film, and you get to see Loomis more, so you root for him more, and like naturally because of that, uh, he still seems like he's trying to make like profit a little bit off of this incident, or off Michael Myers. So you kind of root for Sheriff Brackett a little. Uh, I mean, you kind of like Sheriff Brackett a little bit more inadvertently, but uh, because Loomis is in more of the movie, you like him more also inadvertently. <laughs> so you end up liking Loomis more as a character. I mean, as a as a as a character, you like him more because he's in more of the movie, but Brackett, I think, is the better character. But uh, anyway, or the more uh, likable one of the two. But anyway, so he tries to warn Sheriff Brackett about what's going on and everything. You get a lot of the same shit from the original movie. You got, like, the missing Judith Myers tombstone or whatever. Fucking, there's a crucified dog there or coyote or something like that in place of the stone or where the headstone used to be. And I'm like, okay, that's okay. Uh, decent. I mean, I really could give it or take it. Take, I mean, take it or leave it. <laughs> but anyway, I got Daniel Harris in the film, plays Brad Dourif's daughter. She's okay. Um, she does fine. I like Daniel Harris. Her acting is fine here in this film, but her character is made to be so obnoxious. All, all three of the girls, Linda, Annie, and Lori, played by Scott Taylor Compton, <laughs> and their, uh, their acting is okay. And they're no, they're, well, Daniel Harris is, I think, acting wise is better than the, probably better than the girl from the original film who played Annie. Or at least, uh, or at least even with her, the girl that plays Linda, uh, she's better automatically because she doesn't say totally all that much. Even though I think P.J. Souls is, um, is a better actor altogether than this girl. But because character-wise for this character, she didn't say totally a thousand times, so I automatically liked her better anyway. But as a person, she's shown in the film. Uh, her character is a douchebag too, and uh, Lori is the most likable of the three, and her character is still obnoxious. She like takes a bunch of bagels and makes like screwing references with them. It's like sticking her finger through them, like hoo, 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 hoo. I'm like, okay, really? But anyway, <laughs> she's talking about some like fucking some dude or something like that. I'm like, okay. I know all through the commentary, Rob Zombie's like the original Lori. You know, she'd be like Amish or something like that if we tried to make this one like that one. And I'm like, what? The original Lori, I kind of got as like a bookish girl, but she smoked weed and stuff too, and kind of got the idea that she just was shy and didn't really want to get into a relationship with anybody. I never thought that she was like a weirdo or unreal or something like that, uh, or unreal characterization of a person. In this film, this one feels like a fucking unreal characterization of a person. If you ask me. But, uh, because it's so obnoxious and over-the-top, like, a version of a teenager, uh, <laughs> just such a aggravating version of a teenager that I just can't stand it. But, uh, you get those characters, <laughs> Sheriff Brackett is much more likable than any of them, and, well, I, fuck, I even like Loomis better than any of them. I don't mind Michael McDowell's Loomis, um, I've, uh, I believe I've already said that, uh, he's fine as Loomis, it's just that when he recites the same lines as, uh, Dawn Pleasance, it becomes uh, like he's a pale imitation of the original. But uh, jump right in the film here. So you got Michael Myers. He goes back to his old house. He gets the original Michael Myers mask, which is still there. <laughs> it's like really weathered down and decayed a little bit on it and dirty. So it kind of gives like a real cool look to the mask. So he's got the mask now. He's stalking around, stalking Lori and stuff like that. Basically retread of everything before. And this Michael Myers has been painted to be human. I mean... This one has like a generic serial background, serial killer background, so he's painted as being a real person and not so much like a, a phantom figure who's slightly supernatural and you don't you don't know if he is, you know, a human or maybe slightly not, which adds more to the mystique. But here, uh, he's painted as like a real guy, like an ordinary serial killer, and so he automatically knows who Lori is somehow, even though he's not seen her for like I don't know how long, twenty years. In this movie, the timeline is like really non-consequential or uh, because it's like Rob Zombie's retro 70s every timeline is combined together world <laughs> so it's his own universe basically which I'm fine with but um so he automatically knows who she is you got Tommy Doyle in this one and Tommy Doyle in this one is not as interesting as the kid from the first one I didn't like him as much and the Lindsay uh character in this one is more obnoxious and not as likable as the kid from the, uh, the original so I'm like, eh, what? it seems like Rob Zombie went out of his way to make every character more obnoxious than they were in the original movie, which I'm not sure why. <laughs> but, uh, 
so you got like Michael Myers standing over there and like Laura's looking at him and, she, and uh, her friend Linda's like, so uh, what's up pervert? You want some of the young stuff? I bet you want this or something like that. And then you got fucking Annie going, yeah, crawl back under your fucking rock, man. My daddy's the sheriff. Woo. And I'm like, eh, I don't give a shit if these characters die. I like Daniel Harris. She's great in Halloween 4 and even the shitty 5. Here, she does, acting wise, like I've said, she's fine. But the way her character is portrayed, I can't stand her. I despise her. I don't give a fuck if either one of these characters die. And even Lori, I have a hard time caring for. Because she gets more and more obnoxious to the movie. So later on in the movie, you get like a similar uh, fucking same scene as you kind of did from the original. With um, fucking uh, Linda and her boyfriend fucking again in the... Except this time it's in the Myers house, the old decayed Myers house. Michael sees him, comes in there. You get like a retread scenes. You get some retread scenes of the original film. He stabs the boyfriend and pins him to a wall. Same shit, uh, different day here. Uh, he takes and wires like a fucking sheet over his head and everything. It's uh, shame, same shit, different day here. So uh, if you're going to do something completely different, then don't even have scenes in it that are reminiscent of the original. Maybe like one scene, that's about it, or slight little nods that are kind of like the scenes from the original, but done in a different span. And these are too close. They're just too close to the original for me. But, uh, so he comes up with a big sheet on, and she's totally naked, so you get titties and everything, so you guys should be happy out there. Um, he fucking comes up behind her, chokes her to death. Um, so she's dead. Kind of a fast kill, a little bit too fast for my taste. Not as good as the longer strangulation of the phone cord from the original, but it's decent. So that's how they die later on in the movie. Um, oh, before I forget, you got Ken Foray in a small role in this film as Joe Grizzly. You can see where Michael Myers needs some clothes and he stops at like a truck stop. Goes in there and Ken Foray's like taking a shit. <laughs> and he's like, thanks to some guy coming there, he's wanting some action or something. <laughs> and Ken Foray opens up, uh, opens up the stall and he's got a knife in his hands. Like, I'm going to cut that mask right off your face. He's like, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Joe Grizzly, bitch. <laughs> if they could, I would love like a Grindhouse style spinoff movie with this guy. But anyway, <laughs> so Michael Myers and him got in the fight and he ended up stabbing Ken Foray and killing him and taking his clothes. Which, that was an amusing scene. I like that one. Back to the uh, back to where I was in the story. Um, so you got Annie who's like fucking, uh, well she's watching, she's watching Lindsay. She takes Lindsay over to... Uh, Lori, so Lori can babysit both of them. You get more obnoxious behavior with fucking uh, Daniel Harris humping against the Scott Taylor uh, Compton, uh, humping her against the wall or whatever is like a joke or something stupid. And I'm like, okay, more obnoxious behavior. Uh, but anyway, so uh, you get that, and then she goes back to her house. She's one uh, Lori to watch the two kids, both of them, so she can fuck her boyfriend. Basically, you get Daniel Harris topless in this film, which uh, felt kind of weird because I'm used to out. I've watched all these films in a row, so I've seen her as a little little kid in 4 and 5, so <laughs> the nudity, I know me being a man, I'm supposed to enjoy it, but at the same time, I'm kind of like weirded out by it because I've seen her as a little kid, so it's kind of awkward. <laughs> but anyway, Michael Myers comes up behind, kills uh, her boyfriend who's only there to just to, just in a walk-on role kind of, so he's dead. Uh, she gets up, runs away, he uh, host Max her or whatever and just knocks her down. <laughs> She acts, she's just screaming her head off, and he just goes, Pomp, and she just falls over. <laughs> no, he, she's fucking all cut up and shit when uh, Lori comes over there and finds her. And uh, she, uh, Lori comes over and finds her. She's all cut up and everything. Michael Myers shows up there. That's when you got the scene where Annie's uh, boyfriend is hanging out with a pumpkin over his head. Michael Myers just, like, pushed him, like, <laughs> It's kind of funny, really, but humorous and adds to the character. But, uh, so he pushes him like that. And uh, Lori sees Michael Myers, finds him, she's chasing after. She gets the fuck out of there, she runs away. Annie survives in this film, unlike the original, which I actually thought was a decent change. Uh, but uh, she gets out of there, she runs back to her house, Michael Myers chases him. Um, uh, the fuck, oh, before I forget, Michael Myers also kills Lori's adoptive parents in this film. Uh, you get a decent scene where the dad is standing outside, and Michael Myers just lunges out and slices like that real quick and just kills the. Uh, the father like that with the next slice and he runs in there and D Wallace Stone plays the mom and he just kills her by just like holding her head down and crunching her neck like that like snapping it he's got her by the hair and she's on her knees and he just like like that and snaps her neck or something similar to that uh that's okay uh it's nothing to write home about but uh so he killed both them but anyway back to uh, leading to the climax here of the film or the or close to the or close to the end of the film here or leading well, I said, yeah, this is almost the climax. Well, all, yeah, back to almost the climax of the movie. Um, uh, she, uh, Michael Myers chasing after her. The police show up there. They're trying to fucking, uh, 
well, Sheriff Brackett, I believe, is the one that sends the police over there to, or no, she calls 911, I believe, and the police show up is what it is, I think. Or Sheriff Brackett sends them one, I forget. I listened to this movie with the commentary on because I wanted to hear what Rob Zombie actually said about the movie, so I'm not sure exactly what happened, uh, how the police got there, I mean. But they get there, one of them shoots Michael Myers, and the guy doesn't keep shooting for some reason. He just stops after he shoots him, shoots him one time, and Michael Myers kills him, of course. And I'm like, you ignorant bastard, why don't you keep shooting? And <laughs> But anyway... The other cop is like stabbed like through this door and you see blood like coming through the door like you can see through it. It looks it's kinda interesting death scene, kinda neat one. I like that one. Uh, he's stabbed in like stabbed in the back or the head or something like that and uh, you see the blood like coming uh, shining through the door. That's kind of a neat death scene. Um uh, so he end, ends up kidnapping Lori and taking her out of there. Um you get Dr. Loomis and Sheriff Brackett show up, uh he sees his daughter all messed up and he's freaked out obviously, which would make sense. And uh, Loomis decides to go try to find out where Lori is. He heads to the Myers house, which is obviously where Michael Myers is took Lori. So he heads there. They're going to the – everybody's heading to the Myers house. <laughs> um, so they're, at the, they're there at the Myers house, and Michael Myers is, like, trying to fucking get her to remember who he is, even though they don't paint Michael Myers as being, like, he's crazy in the movie. But when you see him as a kid, like, growing up or whatever and the way he's, his life is and everything, he doesn't come off as, like, stupid, like, crazy, light and zoom, like a – Looney, like, <laughs> like he wouldn't even know that she wouldn't know who he was because she hasn't seen him in so fucking long. So I'm thinking, what the fuck are you expecting here, Mike? <laughs> she has no idea who you are. So he's like got a picture of him, like holding her as a baby, and he gets her to take it, and she takes it, and uh, she has no idea who he is, and she he takes off his mask too. So he's like trying to connect with her on an emotional level, and I'm like, this Michael Myers is completely different than the original one. He's not pure evil at all. He's just like a loony guy. <laughs> But, uh, so, which I disappointed in. So she takes a knife, stabs him, takes off, and then he decides to go crazy and kill her, too, for some reason. I guess because she rejected him. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I guess he didn't uh, suspect that killing multiple people that she liked would, uh, cause her not to embrace him. <laughs> I guess he never thought of that one. So he chases after her, and, uh, they manage to make it outside. You get Dr. Loomis showing up, and he fucking guns Michael down with a 357 Magnum, I think. So, after this, the way this character has been portrayed in more of, more of a human character or person, uh, he should be dead. This should be the end of it. If Rob Zombie was, Rob Zombie goes for realism for most of the movie. Uh, Michael Myers should be dead. He should be dead. This is end of movie right here. But, uh, he miraculously survives, attacks, uh, crushes Dr. Loomis' skull. Uh, which my, Dr. Loomis should be dead once again, but he's immortal, so he still ain't dead. And you get a scene where he's like trying to stop Michael Myers from chasing after Lori, and he's like grabbing Michael Myers' leg and trying to hold him back, but Michael Myers still powers on. <laughs> uh, so there, Dr. Loomis comes back for the sequel, obviously, because he can't die. Uh, <laughs> he's just like Michael Myers, might as well be uh, unkillable. <laughs> Even though the Michael Myers in this film should be dead because he's a human character, so how he's still alive, I have no idea. Uh, so he's chasing after Lori. She's ran into the Myers house. You get a cool scene. I like the scene where she's like up in the, the roof. And the Michael Myers has got like a big fucking plank. And he's jamming it into the roof. Trying to like knock her out of there. And that was entertaining. She uh, He finally quits because he can't get her. But uh, then she just falls out on her own. Because she just like rolls over to the side. And falls through it, the roof on her own. So I'm like okay. Then she just lands and hits the floor. He comes in there. And there she is standing. She has took Loomis's gun after he. Uh, after he. Uh, he fell on the floor from the skull crush. She's got his gun now. Michael Myers just charges her, and they fall off like the balcony of the house and land down on the, the ground. It was an entertaining scene. It was decent. So they're down on the ground, and uh, I, I don't like the ending of this movie anywhere near as much as the original film. It loses like the little ghost story uh, feel that the original had and goes for just more of like a shocking one last intense moment ending, which I'm like, eh, okay. <laughs> it's not that great. She, they're down there, and Michael Myers is just like laying down there on the ground. Fucking, she's got a gun pointed right at his face, and uh, she, uh, Michael Myers goes to grab the gun, and she just shoots him in the face, and then blood splatters on her face. She's screaming her head off like ah, <laughs> over and over, nonstop, really loud, and then it just cues off. And then you get a scene of like a little home video of uh, Michael Myers as a little kid holding her as a little baby, and it's like a little. Like, oh, we feel sorry for Michael Myers. <laughs> he can kill 37 people and uh, rape dogs, but we, f <laughs> not rape dogs, but fucking rip dogs' heads off. But we feel sorry for him because he looked like he was nice to the baby. Oh, I'm like, okay, whatever. Fuck that shit. <laughs> You can't make a brutal character like this that sympathetic. It just won't work. And the original ending made him even more sympathetic. 
but to be honest, the original ending I thought actually was more appropriate for the character of Michael Myers because he's more trying to connect with his sister than he is the killer. And to be honest, um, I think the way this movie probably should have ended is uh, him like her realizing that she is his sister and her like fucking embracing him and then killing him and him like being okay with it. I would have uh, liked that better than the ending we do get. Or the ending on the fucking DVD. Uh, which makes him even more sympathetic. I thought that was a little bit more appropriate for the film. For the character of Michael Myers represented here. But he's so present, he's presented like so sympathetic in that original ending. That he just comes off as even more annoying than the one we get here. <laughs> uh, these Both these endings though. Uh, regardless of which ending. And which. Uh, regardless of the ending here. Or the, or, the, or the original ending. Either one pales in comparison to the ending we got in the original film. With him just disappearing like that. That's just the perfect right there. Just him disappearing. That was perfect. Perfect ending. That ending wouldn't have fit for this movie, but they didn't come up with anything that was as good or anywhere close to as good. So I got docket points for that. Uh, this is a two and a half. Uh, that's pretty much the end. That's, oh yeah, that's the end of the movie after that. You can hear the police arriving while she's screaming, and that's the end of the movie. Um, <laughs> so this is written and directed by Rob Zombie. Acting wise, Michael McDowell, he does fine, but he's nowhere near as good as Donald Pleasance. And, but he, he, because he's a different version of Loomis, you don't really. I don't really notice too much that he's not as good as Donald Pleasant until he starts reciting lines. Like he gets the line, like uh, Laurie's like, "I do, I think that was that that was the boogeyman or whatever," and he's like, "I do believe it was." And I'm like, "Okay." He's, he, when you see him reciting lines from the original film, Donald Pleasant's lines, that's when you see that he's not as good as Donald Pleasant. It becomes painfully obvious. It becomes like a cheap, like a stage play version of uh, Donald Pleasant. But uh, Scott Taylor Compton is Lori. Her acting is decent, but the version of Lori here I despise. I hate. I don't give a fuck if she lives or dies. Um, the version of Linda here, her character, I hate as well. I don't give a fuck if she lives or dies. Annie, I don't give a fuck if she lives or dies. The movie altogether, though, I'll give it two and a half stars because it's entertaining, and this is one of Rob Zombie's better films. Definitely better than his sequel, which I'm going to get to right after. Uh, um, well, I'm going to watch it here pretty soon. <coughs> hmm. Sorry, the shittiness of this one is making me cough too. <laughs> but yeah, this is only a two and a half star film. It's not that great, and uh, I recommend don't bother with it. Really, it's nowhere near as good as the original classic. So uh, I'll see you guys again with the final Halloween film review, Rob Zombie's Halloween Two. Wish me luck with that one, cause it's pretty bad.